Good morning, good morning, family. It's me, Pastor C, and I wanted to welcome you to our virtual worship experience here at Emmanuel Light of the World. Hey, listen, truth is, you know right here, if you're here this morning, you are rocking with the best, Emmanuel Light of the World, and we're so glad that you are here with us. I pray that God has already shown his self, shown his face to you. This is going to be an incredible year, incredible year. Okay, listen, I need you to do me two things. I need you to like this video. I need you to like this video. Tell somebody, let's spread the gospel of the Lord this morning as it relates to sending this message out. So many other things, so many negative things that are going out. What better way to start somebody's day than to spread the gospel? So I need you to like this video. I need you to share it with somebody. All right, family, I don't have too much to say this morning. I just want you to prepare your hearts and prepare your minds for what God is going to do this month. This month, we are dealing with the series, the title of The Power of Giving. Listen, this is a series that's literally going to touch your heart, literally, because we believe that everything flows from the heart, even as it relates to giving, what you give, how you give. If you do give, it all flows from the heart. So I want you to prepare your hearts and minds for what God is going to do this month. All right, family, grab your family. I know it's probably cold this morning. Grab your family, get your cover, whatever you got to do, get your hot cocoa, your coffee, and prepare yourself for what God is going to do this morning. I love you so much and glad again to see everybody with us this morning. Hey, family, this is a portion of the service. If you can't preach, prophesy, lay hands, um, usher, take care of kids, whatever it may be, this is a portion of the service uh, that God has given us all uh, an opportunity to participate in. It's time to give. I need somebody to just type in the chat, I'm ready to give, I'm ready to give, I'm ready to give. This is so fitting because as it relates to giving, of course, this month, we're dealing from the subject of the power of giving. How powerful is it able uh, for you and I to be able to give? I want to read this verse. We've heard this verse before, uh, and I love this. It's, it's found in Malachi 3, 10 through 12, and it says, this. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Watch this. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. So this just isn't anybody, just random person saying it. This is God himself saying, test me in this. He said, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for you to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord God Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord God Almighty. I want us to take note of this text that it's just not, as I stated earlier, just somebody just saying this. This is the Lord God Almighty. He is talking. He is telling us. Don't store up. He says, I want you to, to, to give uh, these things away so that as you give, he says, I'm going to be able to bring things back. Not only just bring stuff back to you, whoa, but watch this. God says, I'm going to open up the floodgates. Anybody who's ever seen a movie uh, when the, uh, uh, the, the, the gates or when they open and there's water that's behind it, and once they finally open, boom, the water just begins to rush. Listen, I want to let you know that those are the type of blessings that you're about to walk into this year in 2022. God is going to begin to open up the floodgates and there's going to be so much that you're going to have to be able to give it away. You're going to have to store some. All those different things, that's the way God is going to bless you this year. Listen, it's predicated on you not holding on to what God has given you, but giving back what God has given you. And I believe as you give, as you find yourself in a place of yielding, being obedient as it relates to your giving, God is going to open up. Somebody just type that in the chat. I want God to open up the floodgates. Come on, come on, type it in there. I want God to open up the floodgates. That's what God is going to do in your life this year. Listen, there's a couple of ways uh, that you can give. Of course, you can give via our website. It's www.elotw.com and you can follow the prompts for giving and be able to give via our PayPal. Also, you are able to give via our Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign E-L-O-T-W 5415. It's dollar sign E-L-O-T-W 5415. And you'll be able to give via our Cash App temporarily. We will be changing that uh, in the near future. But right now, you are able to give at our Cash App. Listen, family, I want you to give generously. I want you to give from a place uh, as you know that God has been generous and God has been kind to you. Listen, it all flows from the heart. It flows from the heart. The reason uh, that we give the way that we're able to give is because of our heart. 
Even if you're not giving, it comes from the heart. But I believe, as the scripture tells us, as you test God, test God in this area, God says, watch this, I'm going to open the floodgates. Not only that, I'm going to protect the pestilence from destroying your crops. Come on, family, Emmanuel family that's watching, and even our extended family, let's give. Hey family, myself and Pastor Ruki want to thank you so much for giving this morning. Listen, there is something about giving. You hear me say this all the time, that you don't have to give. But the mere fact that you do give, God is building your faith uh, in him. And as you give, as the scripture tells us, I believe that when you give, God is going to begin to open up those floodgates. Many of you are already experiencing, even in the second week of January, that God has been blessing. God has been opening doors for you. Continue to give. Test God right there. And I promise God is going to show you who he is. Again, thank you so much for giving. And you can just repeat this after me. If I receive this word with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. But if I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, over my flesh, over my feelings, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need form and fashion. I need Life. Well, good morning, Emmanuel, light of the world. Amen. Um, I'm just so excited and so honored to be able to deliver the word of God to you all this morning. Um, you know, I always like to start our moments and our times really conditioning the atmosphere uh, with worship and just opening up our hearts to be able to receive what it is that the Lord wants to deposit. Because I'm telling you, he wants to make a deposit, not just a deposit that will uh, last for a moment, but a deposit that will truly, truly, truly transform you. Amen. Are y'all ready for that type of deposit this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. So right where you are in your home, I believe that the presence of God is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He is everywhere at the same time. And so if you believe that, I want you to just lift your hands right in your room, right in your home, in your vehicle, wherever you are listening this morning, and just begin to worship and praise the Lord. Father God, we just invite you your presence into this moment, into this time. We ask that you would have your way. We ask that you would move through every home, move through every car, move through every heart, Lord God, this morning. I ask, Father God, that your tangible presence would be made manifest in the lives of your people this morning. Father God, I thank you that even in this uh, message this morning, Lord God, that you are releasing healing, you are restoring, you are mending, you are releasing a peace. Father God, you are guiding, you are instructing all by your word. And so Father, we say have your way. If there's any among us, Lord God, who is grieving right now, Father God, the loss of loved ones, Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would receive your peace. We lift up the Jennings family, Lord God, as their uh, dear sister has transitioned. Father God, we pray that you would release a peace to that family that truly transcends all understanding, that you would guard their heart and their mind in this season. Father God, you said, Lord God, that you would carry the burden, you would carry the weight, Lord God, for those who mourn. 
And so, Father God, I thank you that you are lifting that family up. We are lifting that family in prayer. Believers, just begin to pray for the Jennings family in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you are just releasing a peace, Father, in this moment. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus Christ's name. We say, have your way in this message in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I just love, love, love the presence of the Lord. Amen. I love it. Amen. And I just believe that um, the Lord has just something uh, just so special to release to this house this morning. We started a series at the top of the year called the power of giving can y'all just uh, type that in the chat box let the world know amen that there is power in giving amen and so the lord says that you know what i want in this month is really for us to just begin to unveil the layers of the heart as it pertains to giving amen that it's more than just um sowing a seed it's more than just giving financially but it's really it has so much to do with the condition of our heart and so we spent two weeks the last two weeks really talking about a heart that gives um and really focused in on that layer of love. And I believe that the Lord wants to kind of build upon that and really just speak to us this morning about a heart that gives or a heart that honors, amen? We talked about the heart that loves in the form of giving, but today we're gonna hit on a heart that honors, amen? A heart that honors. Amen. I have such an amazing husband, Pastor Chuck. Y'all have an amazing pastor, Pastor Chuck, you know, and I'm just so grateful that he is the leader of our home. Amen. One of the things that uh, my husband uh, mentioned to us as a family is that we're going to focus on a word this year um, where we're really going to submit to the Lord in a certain area. And the area or the word that he spoke to us um, his family was um, the word honor. And um, he had an opportunity to be able to teach our children um, what it means to truly honor your parents. But as we begin to dive deeper in this word honor, we realize that, you know, honor is, <laughs> is one of those words and one of those things that is declared throughout scripture. We see that word honor on so many levels. Um, we can really look at um, probably at least eight, nine, ten areas or ways in which the Lord desires for us to honor or commands us to honor. He, he tells us to honor our mothers and, and our father. He tells us to honor those who are in authority over us. He tells us to honor um you know, honor our bosses, honor uh, one another. Amen. And so, and most importantly, he tells us to honor him. Amen. And so we're going to look at this word honor. We're going to take a very close look at this word honor because I believe that it's one of those words that will really, if we, if we get it, if we understand it, if we allow it to really resonate in our spirit and, and really walk out this word, amen, in our lives, amen, um, I believe that we're going to see great, um, just great results in our lives, amen. Because what I realize about the Lord is that there are a lot of conditional um, commands that he gives us. And when I say conditional, I'm saying there's a lot of things in the word where he says, if you do this, then you will reap this. Amen. And so we call those conditional um, scriptures. Amen. And so these are things that you can bank on. These are promises that you can hold on to. These are things that you can say, OK, if God, God says, if I do this, then I will reap this. And we see that a lot as it pertains to giving. But one of the things that the Lord uh, declares to us on top of everything else that he tells us to honor, amen, there's a scripture that I want to highlight today that we're going to really be parked at for the rest of this uh, message. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3, um, verses 9 through 10. 
as it relates to as it relates to honor. And so I want us to go and turn there, um, but I want us to read um, a few of the verses above that. So I'm gonna start at verse five, but we're really gonna give emphasis to verses nine and 10. Okay, so verse uh, five in Proverbs chapter three says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you the path to take. Verse seven, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then, oh, there's that conditional word. It says, then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. This is it, I want y'all to lean in on this verse. Verse nine, honor the Lord with your wealth. Some translations may say, honor the Lord with your substance, which simply means your wealth, your increase, amen? Those finances that the Lord has placed in your hands. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth, and the best part, somebody say blessed, best part, amen. Somebody say best part of everything you produce. Oh, here's another condition. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Amen, with good wine. Hallelujah. I, I was listening to a, a, a pastor I share a story about um, a friend of his who was very wealthy and um, he uh, actually was able in a position where he was able to bless a synagogue with $45,000 for them to help rebuild, right? $45,000 this man was able in a position financially to be a blessing to this church, this synagogue. And um, uh, the pastor says a few years passed, maybe about five years passed, and he saw this same uh, man uh, in a very, you know, cheap shoe store buying shoes. And so the pastor goes up to him and he says, you know, uh, how's everything going, right? And the man looks at him and he says, things are not going so well. I went bankrupt last year. I, I basically lost a lot of my um, wealth and I'm, I'm really just trying to rebuild and, and really struggling in some areas financially, but things are not really looking great and looking up to me for me. And so, and so the pastor prayed for him and he left out the shoe store and he started to have a conversation with the Lord. And he says, Lord, how can this be? How can this man who had great wealth just five years prior give $45,000 to your church, to a synagogue? And then five years later, he, went, he goes bankrupt. He has no finances. He's struggling financially. He says, God, explain this to me. And he says something that was so profound. He says, I want you to understand something. He says, this man never gave $45,000 to me. He gave it to a synagogue. I want that to just sizzle in your spirit and just sit, 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 sit right there with that. God told this pastor that he never gave $45,000 to me, but he gave it to a synagogue. Amen? And I know some of you guys may be puzzled right now and you say, well, I give to the church all the time and I give to this you know, organization all the time. And that's great because we should give to those things. But here's a layer of the heart that we want to unfold because this man apparently from the outward appearance, it looked as though he was giving to God, blessing God's house, it helping to advance God's kingdom. And he was. 
But as we unveil the heart, as the Lord began to unveil the heart to this pastor, he says his heart was not that of honoring God, but it was just giving to a building. Oh, come on, Emmanuel, out of the world. Because I want us to make sure that even in our giving, because some of us are faithful and consistent tithers, we are faithful and consistent givers. Whatever it is that we need to give and help out, we do it, amen? But I want us to make sure that our heart is that of love for God and honor for God, amen? It's no, really no other reason, amen? Yes, I love God's people, but the love that I have even for his church and for the people, it first stems from the love that I have from God, for God, amen? And so as I sow, as I give, Amen. In whatever areas I feel led that the Lord is leading me into or tithe and offering, I'm not giving to a building. Although as I give, it will help to cause the building to progress. It will help to. But the layer of my heart says I love God. And the reason why, and you know, and because I love God, amen, I'm able to sow from that place in honoring God in what I give. Are y'all seeing this today? What I've realized is that there is no way that we can have love without honor. There's no way that we can say that I love God, but yet I'm going to disregard this passage of scripture that tells me to honor the Lord with my wealth. Amen. Love and honor go hand in hand. Amen. They cannot be separated. They cannot be done uh, 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 separately. Amen. You cannot say that I love, but I will not honor. So let's take a look at, we know what love is, but let's take a look at honor. Amen. We're just unveiling some layers here. The word honor, as most of us may know, it's a word that carries weight. Amen. It's a weighty word. It's a word that says, as we are looking at this passage to honor the Lord. Amen. It did not say honor the church. It did not say honor, you know, this, this, you know, thing or whatever, which we are to honor. But our honor comes and flows first from our honor to God. Amen. And so this word honor says, it says that God carries weight in your life. This word honor says that I respect and I reverence the Lord so much so, amen, that I'm willing and I'm able and I want to obey him. Whatever his commands are, whatever he is leading me to do, whatever he is calling me to do, whatever he is placing on my heart, I honor God. He holds this type of weight in my life that I can honor him, not just through lip service, not just through words, because it's simple for us to say, I love God, I honor you, Lord, I honor you, Lord. But when it comes to the other part of honor, amen, that other part of honor is obedience. And so where obedience is not present, honor is questionable. Are y'all seeing that? Hallelujah. Where obedience is not apparent, honor is questionable. Amen. And in this season, I do not want, amen, God to question, amen, whether or not the people of Emmanuel love him and honor him. He says in his word, he, Jesus says this, he says, he says, how, you know, this is how I will know that you love me. Amen. Is if what? If you obey my commands. What he's saying is not only in that word, love can be interchanged in that verse. This is how I know that you honor me is if you obey my commands. Say hallelujah. Amen. So my question to us is, does God hold weight in your life? 
Right now, as you're looking at even your increase, you're looking at your wealth, you're looking at all that God has blessed your hands to produce, all that God has blessed your hands to do in the earth, amen, to bring wealth to your, to your uh, home, amen. Do we hold, you know, does God hold weight in your life? I'm reminded of my father, Apostle, uh, the late Apostle Charles um, Mathis, and I remember him and my mother, um, Pastor Carolyn, um, several years ago, several, several years ago, they had and owned a clothing, very successful clothing and shoe business. Now, my father would tell this story to us all the time, amen, that when he was young, he came from a very poor um, upbringing, very poor family, where he didn't even sometimes have shoes or decent enough shoes to wear to school. So one of his desires was when I get older, I'm going to own shoes. I'm going to own a business that sells shoes and clothes. And the moment he became up of age, he said he had $35 in his pocket and he traveled to Atlanta, Georgia from South Carolina. And he had on his heart to start a business, a clothing business, a shoe store. Amen. Well, the Lord took that $35 and the Lord blessed that um, his business to be a, a yearly a, a million dollar business that he was bringing in. And I remember when he tells the story that when they he really came to the Lord, amen, and he realized that it was the Lord that was blessing his life. It was the Lord that was bringing this increase into his business. It was the Lord that was produce, helping him to produce wealth in his life. When he got saved, he came to the realization that it's been the Lord all this time. And when he came to the realization, he says, Lord, how do I thank you? Lord, how can I show my gratitude and my thanksgiving? How can I honor you? He didn't know that this scripture was even in the word. Amen. He just wanted to know, have you been there? That God has blessed you so much and you're just saying, God, how can I bless you back? How can I show you that I honor you and I thank you for all that you have caused my hands to produce, all that you have done in my life? Has anyone been there in their life amen where the Lord has just shown up in such miraculous ways in such awesome ways and you just want to say thank you it's sometimes when God begins to bless your life that just a little lip service is not enough you want to show the Lord and honor the Lord with something to let him know that you're grateful and my father and my mother had this particular heart as they came to the Lord. They were a member of a church and, and, and my father discovered in the word that, oh, oh, I, I can honor the Lord with my wealth and with the first fruit of everything that I produce. Amen. And so he decided to take 10% of what he made in that year, which he made a million. So what's 10% of that? and sow it to the church that he was a part of. Now this church was a Baptist church, amen, and they collected dues and, and they would put everybody's um, offering or dues on a bulletin next to their name. Sister Willis gave $10, Sister, you know, Rebecca gave um, $30, and they would list everybody's name in the church and put <laughs> that amount on the bulletin every week. Well, my father and mother, they sold off of their business and the pastors was trying to give the money back to them. The pastor was saying, I can't put this amount in the bulletin, right? They did not understand what my father had discovered in the word, what my mother had discovered in the word about giving and honoring God with their wealth. And, and they could not understand. They were thinking that my father and mother was giving to the church. But he says, no, I'm, I'm not giving to the church per se. I'm giving to God. 
And as I give to God, yes, I sow it into his house and that his kingdom might be advanced and that work might be established and done in his house. But I am not giving to a building. I'm not giving to a pastor. Is anybody with me this morning? I'm not giving to this thing. I am giving in honor and in love to God. My goodness. Whew. Thank you, Lord. And so this is the command. He tells us to honor, like I said, all throughout scripture. But there's, it's very difficult for us to be able to honor our spouses, honor our children, children honoring their parents. Uh, um, it, it is very difficult for us to be able to honor our, our uh, supervisors, to be able to honor our president, those who are in authority over us. It's very difficult for us to even honor one another if we have first not uh, discovered how to honor God. Amen? As believers, we know that we are to honor God in our words, that everything that flows out of our mouth should be honoring to the Lord. He says, I want you to honor me even in your language, in your words. Let your words be honoring. But not only that, he says, I want you to honor me even in your deeds and what you do, in your actions, in your behavior, in your lifestyle. Honor me with your life. And the other area that he tells us to honor him is to honor with our finances, amen? And so if we are to obey the commands of God and do what it is that God has commanded us to do, amen, to the one that we love, amen, honoring God with our wealth is important. If we look up in Proverbs chapter three and we look at the uh, first verse, I just want to just read this very, very quickly because this is a command that he gives us. This is not a suggestion. <laughs> this is not an option. This is the command that the Lord gives. And one of the things that I notice here in the first verse of Proverbs three, it says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you, but store my commands in your what? heart. If you do this, watch this. He says, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Amen. Let's go down to verse three. It says, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. He says, tie them around your neck as a reminder and write them deep within your heart. Amen. So these are even commands that he's saying, I want you to store my commands in your heart. He says, I want you to even just tie those things around your neck. Amen. Don't, which means he says, I want you to walk with this, these commands. I want you to live out these commands. They're tied around your neck because I don't want you to forget these commands because this is something that will produce. There's the condition. He says, a satisfying life. How many of y'all want a satisfying life? Well, it first starts with honor. And man, there's three things that I want to share with us today very quickly as it relates to a heart that honors. We talked about the heart that loves, a heart that honors. Love and honor go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Amen. If I say that I love you, then I, what I'm also saying is that I honor you, not with just lip service, but also in obedience, amen, and in service. The first word that I want us to understand here is three words that I want to pull out of this passage in Proverbs 3. The first word is that of trust. The second word is seek. And the third word is obey. Trust, seek, obey obey. Can y'all just declare that out your mouth? And if somebody could just type it in the chat box, trust, seek, obey. We're talking about honor this morning. Amen. If we truly want to live a life that is honoring, amen, uh, to God, especially in the realm of finances, of wealth, of your substance, amen. The first thing in this is trust. 
Amen. There's a scripture that's found in that same chapter, but verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Amen. How many of, of us really depend on our own understanding when it comes to finances? How many of us really depend? We, we, how many of us really depend on our own understanding when it comes to wealth and finance, when it comes to money, when it comes to saving, when it comes to budgeting, when it comes to spending, when it comes to all, we really just lean on our own understanding. Amen. If you're saying, yeah, you know, there's a lot of areas of my life when it comes to finances, amen, where I really just believe, I lean on my own understanding. What, you know, I, I live by the, op, by the, by the uh, option that says I, I have what I can see. Whatever I see in my bank account, that's what I have. I don't see anything else. I don't, I don't see the increase coming. I don't see how God is going to provide this. I don't see how God is going to open the door. So I live uh, with my own understanding. Is that anybody here today? And you don't have to type it in the chat box, amen, but just nod your head in your home. If sometimes you found yourself, amen, uh, living in that particular way without the realization and without the daily understanding that it's God that owns it all. Amen? Instead, we have the mentality sometimes that says, uh, my job is my supplier. That I will put more trust in my job. I will put more trust in my business. I will put more trust in whoever is supplying my needs than I do the one who supplies it all. Amen. And if that's you, then I'm, I just want to you know, tell you this morning that you are struggling with an area of trusting the Lord. Amen. And when we live in such a way that is uh, that, that we say, God, I love you. God, I honor you. Amen. Trust should come easy. Because if I'm saying that I reverence you, you hold weight in my life. Amen then I'm going to trust you enough to walk in that obedience to whatever it is that you are leading me to do. Amen. So if trust has been an issue for you, amen, I just want to pray right now, Father God, I, I thank you that you're opening up the eyes of your sons and daughters to be able to see you as Jehovah Jireh, the provider, to be able to see you as the one who supplies and meets and sustains all of our needs. For them to begin to see that it is you that causes them to produce wealth. That you are not um, um, bound by uh, 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 the minimum wage job. You are not bound by a loss of employment. You are not bound by those who have been fired by jobs that have closed down. But you are even able to create blessings for the people. You are the great creator who is able to create blessings and to pull seed out of the ground, even in times of drought. My God, I need somebody to receive this today because you have sown seed, amen, in the ground, but yet you have not seen a harvest. And so maybe you're feeling as though, God, I don't know if I can trust you because I've sown the seed, but I have not seen where the harvest has come. God says the seed is in the ground. And even in times of barrenness, he has the ability to be able to call some things to sprout up in your life in the area of finance but that comes and we're able to see that when we stand in a place of love honor but also trust that we are not leaning upon our own understanding of things because our own understanding will limit the move of God. God is saying, I want to move in some areas, but I need my sons and daughters to trust me in this hour. I believe that there is a great wealth transfer that is going to be released to the church. Amen. But the condition of our heart Amen. Needs to be uh, in a place and in a posture and position to be able to receive it and know what to do with it. God says, I need you to trust me 
with the increase. Amen. That was for somebody. That was a prayer for somebody today. Amen. So the first thing is trust. Do not lean upon your own understanding concerning your finances, concerning your business. I even hear the Lord saying even the things that he has begun to stir up on the inside of you and he is causing and really uh, pushing you to step out and to do it. Amen. You're thinking in your mind that finances is this not there, but God says that even as you hear my instructions and you go forth in doing what it is that I'm asking you to do. He says, I will release the resources and the finances that you will need to be able to do the job. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that that frees somebody and blesses somebody today. All right. The second word that we're, that we're focusing on, we know that we need trust in this realm of honor. Amen. And, and, and we, and the second one is to seek. Amen. Somebody say seek. Amen. The second part of that particular scripture, not only do we trust the Lord and not depend on our own understanding, but verse six says, seek his will in all that you do. Somebody say all that you do and watch this. And he will show you the path to take. Amen. He will show you the path to take. That sounds like a promise to me. Amen. He says, if you seek me, you will what? Find me. If you seek, amen, my will and what it is that, um, that I want you to do. And we're talking about finances here. Amen. And so when it comes to finances, God says that if you seek my will regarding your finances, regarding your spending habits, some of us just need to break free, amen, from these bad spending habits. Amen. I know I found myself guilty a lot of times. Like, why did I buy that? <laughs> Was that even necessary? Did I spend, I spent how much on that? Amen. But some of these spending habits.